G'day guys and gal, the setting of 40k, that being a really shit version of our Milky Way, is a pretty horrible place to live for just about anyone, other than the orcs. Countless sextillions of humans live in poverty and suffering, just being worked to death on jobs that don't even provide dental. The elder seem like they have it good, until you realise that if they die, which you know they do pretty often, their souls are damned to eternal BDSM. The galaxy is full of demons, witches, monsters, war and suffering. So why don't the people just leave? What is stopping someone from just like flying to the edge of the galaxy in a self-sustaining spaceship and then just keep going? The answer is a lot and it is quite horrifying. But despite that, people from pretty much every race and faction have given escaping the galaxy a red hot go or at least the thought. Before we get started, it's common knowledge that I'm not one to promote mobile games. My rule is that I'll only promote Warhammer mobile games or mobile games that slap. Well today I present a big slap. Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. This game actually came to my attention when my favorite YouTuber, Moist Critical or Penguin Zero, promoted them. Because of his promotion, I actually downloaded the game and started playing it. So it was a very pleasant surprise when they sniffed me out and offered me some dollary deuce to present it to you. Bloodline Heroes of Lithus is different and kind of comical in the way that the main goal is to like marry hectic champions together and then breed super champions. You can also personally shag your own champions to create your own heirs. Outside the whole marriage sex fest situation, the gameplay is actually mad. You use your champions, including the ones you've bred, to engage in stunning battles with the enemy, either AI or other players. To celebrate Halloween, Bloodline Heroes of Lithus is releasing the new Vampire Clan, aka more potential shag buddies. And just by playing the Halloween event, you can get a free accursed champion. So to give this a shot, use my link below. Doing so will get you 10 energy potions, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds, worth about $20 total. Cheers to Bloodline Heroes of Lithus for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over each of the times someone within the Milky Way has said fuck this and attempted to leave. We'll then discuss what happened to those brave few that gave it a red hot crack and what is actually out there in the darkness between the voids. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Let's start with what we know is out there and how we know it. The first one, and I guess the biggest issue with trying to fuck off the Milky Way, is that there is a shitload of Tyranids out there. Tyranids originated from outside of the Milky Way, so it's a no-brainer that they would still have a lot, if not most of their force still out there. This is backed up by the fact that during the Silent King's 60 million year vacation outside of the Milky Way, he said that not only were the Tyranids the main thing he encountered, but they were also the most dangerous. So your first problem with leaving the galaxy is that there is a bunch of space bugs of death ready to numb on your ass. It was actually his wars against the Tyranids during this holiday that made the Silent King choose them as his arch nemesis. However, in reality, a bunch of hibernating Tyranid high fleets on their way to the Milky Way isn't much of an issue if you're careful. Why would they chase one exploration ship or fleet when the real meal is in front of them? No, the main issue is the fact that there is an extremely far distance to the next galaxy and no real way to navigate there when you go faster than the speed of light. Although the warp is a universal thing, the Astronomicon is not, and as soon as you leave its range, you are effectively blind in the warp. This is why Macarius's legendary crusade ended. They got to the edge of the Astronomicon and literally couldn't proceed further without massively increasing the risk of getting raped by demons. Humanity during the Dark Age of Technology did not need the Astronomicon, as their Men of Iron AI were able to accurately navigate the warp, but since Men of Iron are a no-no as well as AI, this method is no longer available to the Imperium. There was actually a Men of Iron ship from the Dark Age that travelled to the future of 40k. Its pilot and friend was killed as a heretic, so the ship raged, fucked up a bunch of space marines and Imperial fleet single-handedly before saying, fuck this galaxy, I'm out. It then proceeded to leave the Milky Way in the search of a new home. This sounds like a stupid temper tantrum, until you realise that it can navigate the warp fine without the Astronomicon. The warp in between galaxies is very calm due to there being next to no life out there and robots don't need to eat. So no, the Imperials haven't really been able to venture out of the Milky Way. In old lore, they did send out some probes and the info they got back was horrifying, basically just the sounds of nothingness and orcs. However, this was very old lore and doesn't make much sense in the current setting, so take it with a grain of salt. The only Imperials that you could say that regularly venture out of the galaxy for extended periods of time are the Space Sharks, but that's more so them acting like a void stalking predator that orbits the Milky Way rather than an exploration fleet that is trying to leave. The one Mechanicus Magos that tried, because he was an explorer and that's what they do, vanished without a trace. Any who attempted to discover his fate were met with grisly ends of their own. So what about the Elder? They have their self-sustaining craft worlds who are only threatened by shit within the Milky Way. Would they escape Slanesh if they left? Surely they should all just leave, shouldn't they? No, of course not. 
fucking retard. Slanesh's claim on the Aldari souls isn't bound by time or space. If they left the Milky Way, Slanesh would follow. If they died a trillion light years away from the Eye of Terror, their soul would still return to the Prince of Pleasure. On top of that, the webway doesn't extend beyond the Milky Way, so they'd lose their ability to travel faster than light. Even if they were able to travel at light speed, it would still take them around 25,000 years to get to the next galaxy. This also creates the issue of Spirit Stones. The craft welders need the Spirit Stones to protect their souls from Slanesh. These stones can only be found within the Eye of Terror on the old Eldar Crone Worlds. Hence, the Eldar's craftworld populations would be restricted by how many stones they were able to collect before they left. As Eldar only lived for like max 10,000 years, the entire craftworld would be nothing but a bunch of wraith constructs by the time they reached the next galaxy. On top of that, the Eldar still need to charge their craftworlds using stars. Sure, each charge gives them enough power for a millennium or so, but that's still a lot shorter than 25,000 years. So no, the Elder cannot just leave the Milky Way, nor is there any incentive for them to do so. The only practical way they could leverage the darkness beyond would be to leave the Milky Way for a millennium, come back to pick up spirit stones and charge their solar sails before going out again. However, even this strategy has issues. One Elder Crawford actually did try to leave the Milky Way, pretty much employing the strategy I just mentioned. Crawford's eyes Suthra left the galaxy just before Slanesh's birth, and they tried to survive in the void between galaxies. However, they didn't collect any spirit stones, hence realized that they were being slowly consumed. They were soon found by Tyranids who implanted their gene stealers onto the Craftworld and then moved on. The Craftworld chose to embrace the gene stealers. By doing so, they protected their souls from Slanesh and were able to survive in the darkness. But not indefinitely. They had to return to the galaxy when shit started to break down. Eventually, the Yanari arrived on the Craftworld and massacred the tainted Elder. But overall, it was a good example of what would happen to the Elder if they tried to leave. What about the Orcs? Have they given it a crack? Well, as I said, the Imperial probe did pick up orc transmissions from neighboring galaxies. That transmission was actually quite grimdark. It implied that one half of the universe was full of orcs and the other half was silent and dead, likely as a result of the Tyranids eating it. This is very old lore though, so I wouldn't use it as a crutch. The orcs within the Milky Way have no interest in leaving. They get all the fun, battles, and bloodshed that they could ever want right here at home. On top of that, their ships are literal rust bucket pieces of shit that would not go so hot in between galaxies. So unless some surviving old ones that left the galaxy at the end of the war in heaven brought a few spores with them, which to be honest, that's pretty likely, then the orcs haven't been able to leave the galaxy just yet. The Tau can't even leave their own fucking backyard, let alone the galaxy, um, so I'm not even gonna spend time on them. As I mentioned with the Necrons, the Silent King has done quite a lot of out of Milky Way traveling. Necrons are perfect for this. Their travel doesn't rely on the warp, they don't need food or consumables to stay alive, and their equipment doesn't really break down, or at least it takes a shitload of time to do so. So if any race was to successfully leave the galaxy, then it would be the Necrons. The only thing really stopping them is their pride. They see themselves as the rightful heirs to the Milky Way. A Necron Overlord would rather shove a pencil down his dick hole while cheese grating his scrotum than abandon his tomb world and dynasty. The Necrons aren't here to survive, they are here to dominate. Something quite interesting now. Do the Catan exist outside of our galaxy? The Catan were created during the Big Bang, fundamental gods of reality. They started off as non-sentient star parasites who would slowly eat suns then move on. It was only after they were given bodies by the Necrons did they gain sentience. However, for the other galaxies, they too likely would have gotten their own Catan. The Void Dragon even claims that he had a multi-galaxy spanning empire, which is probably just the writer getting a bit excited, but could also mean that each galaxy's Catan were like a mirror of each other, maybe able to communicate or something. So the Void Dragon of the Andromeda Galaxy could have a shared consciousness with the Void Dragon of the Milky Way. This is just me spitballing and could be total bullshit. After all, I'm basically just trying to justify the ill-conceived writings, but it is an interesting concept nonetheless. So what is out there? Definitely Tyranids, and a shitload of them if the Silent King was able to bump into them out in the near infinite void between the galaxies. Maybe Orcs as well, and if so, then probably a few surviving old ones. There is actually a theory that the Nids are a creation of the old ones, a hard reset button designed to get vengeance against the galaxy that spat them out. However, this plagiarizes Halo lore a bit too much, so I'm kind of hoping it's not the case. The Silent King also described many other horrors, but the Tyranids were the worst, so we don't really need to worry too much about them. The Warhammer writers have come out and said that they are deliberately leaving the lore regarding outside the Milky Way very vague, as to encourage the reader's imaginations and not to take all the mystery away. Regardless of what's out there and regardless of how shit the Milky Way is, leaving it has time and time again proven to be a really fucking terrible idea. 
If you enjoy the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where there is not only a collection of nude cosplay photos, but also a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more shit content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.